What's up everyone, this is Nadim. If you're new to my channel, I make videos about my life in China and all things Chinese. And if you've been around, well, you already knew that. Today we are taking a deep dive into the world of fish. Wait, what is this? It's a fish burger. What? What? You can't have that. Why? That's cannibalism. How? It's a fish. I'm a human. You come from fish. I come from fish. We all come from fish. I thought we came from apes. No. Boom. I'll show you. You'll see for yourself. Do you know a fish expert? I think I know someone. 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 I can help. I heard you can help. Sure. So, fish, humans, humans are from fish. How, how did that happen? In the evolutionary tree, in the tree of life, if we trace back, we have a lot of ancestors. Apes, like a chimpanzee, is our closest relative, and we share a common ancestor that uh, looks more or less like a chimpanzee, not to li look like a human. So if we trace the back and back and back, so back into water, because there's an important transition of Earth's life from, uh, from water to land. Oh, our ancestor at that time looked like a fish. Okay. It's not a modern fish. We call it the fish, but it's not a modern fish. This fish-like ancestor have a lot of descendants. And one lineage or one clade involved into humans and others in, involved that into other animals. This ape-like thing is our most direct ancestor, mm -hmm. but we go all the way back, yeah. back, 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 back. Exactly. How far back are we going? 450 million, yes. Wow. You're the, you're the common ancestor of all modern jawed vertebrates. That's much deeper uh, back into Earth's history than the, than the human evolution. It, wow. Um, so 450 million is the common ancestor of everything that has a jaw and yeah, has backbone. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So basically, not only are humans and fish related, but like everything. Yeah. Like humans, cats, yeah. dogs, elephants. Yeah. Snakes. Yeah, of course, snakes. And so do we know how this common ancestor look like? Like a fish. But not a modern fish. Not a modern fish. So course. can you describe it? No, we can't because the, there's a fossil gap. Why aren't there fossils? Punctuated the equilibrium. You know, you don't know what it is. I have no idea right? what it is. Right? The changing form of animals and plants, of course, so, uh, is uneven. So they don't just involve and involve and involve and involve from fish to human, the rate is constantly changing and there's a pattern that goes through an explosion. They exploded into numerous lineages and numerous descendants. And then they, that's, a, that, that's a punctuation. So basically there's a, some events. And then they stabilized. They just stop and, uh, and didn't change, change their forms for a very long time. Until there's another event, normally there's a mass extinction, some disaster happened, a lot of these lineages was wiped out, disappear, yeah. disappear, and the survivors then go through another explosion again. So this pattern happens a, a lot in different scales. So that's called a punctuated equilibrium. The equilibrium is like a tra tra tranquility, you know, you know, the stable part of evolution. And the punctuated is all these events, explosion and the mass extinction. You know, all this explosion of, uh, of major lineages can happen in just one or two million years. Oh. And one or two million years is very, it, it's just like a flash in the, in the Earth's history because oh, our history is of billions, billions of years. And uh, the macroevolutionary rate is, is, is so uneven and the chance of being recorded into fossils are kind of even. So you see the, you see, you see the thing here. So uh, it's very difficult to be preserved as fossils, right? Uh, I think, uh, you know... Uh, you need to have certain conditions. Yeah, we, we have like billions of human population right now, right? We probably only have one or two lucky person living on this earth right now can be preserved as fossils. Oh, wow. So the rest is it's just disappeared. So going back to 450 million, and you said that 
a lot of it, a lot of that period that you study is, there are dark spots. In the whole history of evolution, there's a lot of gaps, right? Right. But some are bigger, some are, are smaller. Some are big, but it's just a more or less insignificant part of the story. But this one is big. How big is it? 40 million years. Wow. But just 10 years ago, we managed to close it up into like 30 million years. Okay. And then came a research mm -hmm. that you were part of and that blew up very recently. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about that research? Yeah, first of all, what about talk about the gap? So now we close it further by some uh, 11, uh, 11 million years. So what so, happened? So basically how the first jawed vertebrates uh, exploded, how they evolved into later clades we are more familiar with. We have a more complete record of them and uh, just right now to, to, to today, to, to, to modern uh, Earth. So how did all these major lineages of uh, jawed vertebrates uh, come up and uh, how jaw evolved? Why is the jaw important? Because you mentioned jaw yeah, vertebrates yeah. a lot, so why, why is it important? First and foremost, jaw is, um, uh, is a feeding organ, right? If the animals doesn't have a jaw, like the modern uh, lampreys and hagfishes, it can't bite. It can, it can suck so. and then rasp. It's an insufficient way. However, the jaw vertebrates can do that and they can, they can prey on other, other active uh, swimming things like, uh, like shrimps and smaller fishes. Another thing is that the jaw is the organ for respiration, to breathe. For fish, for aquatic animals, most of the breathing happens by opening the jaws. So the advent of jaws greatly uh, makes the respiration process uh, efficient. Coincidentally with, uh, with the advantage of joy is the rising of oxygen levels in atmosphere and also in water. That's because uh, uh, the plants were involved onto land. They become terrestrial and produce more oxygen than ever before. So that rise of oxygen can be used by the first jawed vertebrates. And that means they can be bigger. And bigger means more chance because one size did matter in evolution. Mm. The jawed vertebrate can not just go big, it can also go small. Mm. So you can see all this potential of, we call it involvability, the ability to be involved into different forms is greatly uh, increased in jawed vertebrates. So in that sense, the jaw is really important. Even the, the ultimate question here is how the jawed vertebrates originates from the jawless ancestors. So all the questions have to be answered by fossil, quest, uh, fossil record. But uh, the fossil record is so, there's a, such, a, such a big gap that uh, previously we can't answer it. But you did right now with yeah, a large right? part of it. That was because you found fossils. Yeah, well, I found fossils from unlikely uh, stratum. In the past uh, 200 years, all the paleontologists want to find the uh, Silurian jawed fishes, but they can't find it. Because that's where like the action yeah. happens, yeah. that's like where the knowledge is packed. Exactly. Not that they didn't find any fossils, they found very, very, very good fossils, but you, found, you, you can't find any jawed fish. You found a small number of jawless fishes, but you didn't find any like jawed, jawed fish. fishes. And that's what you found. We found uh, fossils, that uh, jawed f fishes, from uh, rock beds that being searched again and again, and there's no breakthrough, and breakthrough finally happened here. Can you show me yeah, some of the yeah. fossils, please? All of this is yeah. fish. They are jawed fishes. Wow. Mostly, uh, mostly jawed fishes. If you look at the most prominent one here, this one we describe, it's a, it's a, it's a specimen of Shoshanosteus. Mm. You see the tail fin, right? Mm -hmm. You see the tail fin. And then this, this is uh, the head. The, uh, this is the head. The head is, wow. the anterior part of the head is not preserved. But this, uh, this is the pectoral fin spine. Is this a fish? Yeah, uh, I'm going to talk about it. Okay. It's not a jawed fish, it's a jawless fish. Okay. This is the eye. And this is oh, this, wow. this is the eyes. Yes. Is, yes. Oh my god, these are eyes. Yeah. And this slot is its con counterpart of a nostrils. But a nostril is a paired thing. It's a single median slot. So you see it's uh, different from the jawed fishes. The jawed fish all have paired nostrils. Mm. How old are these fish? Around? These are these are four hundred uh, four hundred and thirty six million years. Wow. It's a travel we never 
imagined. There's a huge number of fishes on that slab, but okay. not just the numbers. It's a diverse of all kind of fishes, jordan fishes and jordan fishes and even crustaceans. There's at least 15 um, taxa, 15 genera of jawed fishes in, in this rock beds. That are new? Yeah, or that are all these things are completely new. Okay. We never found anything like this in any other part of, uh, of the world. So these fossils are really, really exciting, but the fish are super small. Is there a way that we can visualize it on a bigger scale? Oh, I know someone can help. Hello?你好，我我听说你可以帮助我。啊，好，是的，是的，是的。是这样，我刚刚看非常漂亮的花式，但是没办法想一想这个鱼的样子是什么样，所以你有好注意吗？好啊，那我就带你看花式怎么样变到
，就在看我们怎么样可以把这一些这么重要的古生物，然后把它复原出来，呈现给公众。采访我觉得非常棒，谢谢你。嗯哼，不用客气。现在是不是肚子饿了？呃，对。<笑>那我知道这附近有一家烤鱼，要不然、啊、可以可以。然后我告诉你，鱼身上有多少骨头。好的，我一起去吧。嗯。嗯